Hello friends, today's topic is issue of shares at premium wherein consideration received from issue of shares which are issued at premium more than the face value of the shares and the total consideration received is exceeding the fair market value of the shares. If these conditions are satisfied then a consideration will be taxable in the hands of the company as per the provisions of clause. 7b of subsection 2 of section 56 and there are also exclusions mentioned under section 56 to 7b which we will be discussing now friends coming to the next clause mentioned under subsection 2 of section 56 which is 7b of subsection 2 of section 56 which states that any premium received by the company where any premium has been received by the company and the consideration received the total consideration received is exceeding fair market value of the shares then anything excess shall be taxable as consideration under the head income from other sources so Company in this case is company in which public are not substantially interested meaning a private company they have issued shares shares are issued not at face value shares are issued at premium consideration has been received from a resident right and the total consideration received by the company from issuing of shares at a premium is exceeding the fair market value of the shares in such a case any amount which is exceeding the fair market value consideration which is exceeding the fair market value shall be taxable under section 56 to 7b shall be taxable under the head income from other sources so as you can see the provisions are applicable to a company a private company they have issued a shares shares are issued at premium consideration received is exceeding fair market value and the amount has been received from a resident an Indian resident the amount has been received from an Indian resident if these conditions are satisfied then anything in excess of fair market value will be subject to tax under 56 to 7b also there are exceptions to 56 to 7b wherein provisions won't be applicable to a venture capital company to a venture capital undertaking provisions won't be applicable to companies which are notified by central government we will be discussing in detail those exceptions as well till now the companies which have been notified by central government one of the example is a startup company startup company will be exempted from the applicability of the provisions of section 56 to 7b also certain conditions are to be satisfied if these conditions are not satisfied by the exception company the companies to whom exceptions have been provided if they do not satisfy certain conditions then in the year in which default is committed in that year the excess consideration which is exceeding fair market value will be subject to tax also a penalty will be levied of 200 percent of the amount of default so in the year of default the excess consideration will be subject to tax and also penalty will be levied to the company so friends on your screen consideration received in excess of fair market value of shares issued by a closely held company are governed by provisions of 56 to 7b this is part of clause 7b and which is part of 56 to subsection 2 of section 56 so 56 subsection 2 starts with sentence that following clauses 
consideration received from the following clauses will be taxable under the head income from other sources right and after reading that clause 7b starts so clause 7b starts from here and before that there is a sentence under subsection 2 wherein it states that any consideration received from below sub clauses in below clauses there are around 10 clauses in subsection 2 so we are discussing right now clause 7b so before start of subsection 2 i mean while the subsection 2 starts there is a sentence which states that consideration received from below clauses will be taxable under the head income from other sources and after that clause 7b starts with states that a company not being a company in which public are substantially interested receives in any previous year so a company is receiving a consideration a closely held company is receiving a consideration from any person being a resident any consideration for issue of shares that exceeds the face value of the shares so here shares have been issued at premium the aggregate consideration received for such shares as exceeds the fair market value of the shares so the total consideration the aggregate consideration is exceeding the fair market value of the shares and the shares have been issued by premium by a company which is a closely held company provided so this are the exceptional companies provided that this clause shall not apply where the consideration for issue of shares is received by a venture capital undertaking from a venture capital company or a venture capital fund or a specified fund so the consideration is received by a venture capital company venture capital undertaking vcu the consideration is received from venture capital company or venture capital fund or a specified fund this is also clarified further wherein a specified fund is nothing but AIR alternate investment fund it is regulated by SEBI correct so friends first exception is consideration is received by a venture capital undertaking from a venture capital company or a specified fund second exception the funds are received by a company from class or classes of persons as may be notified so central government will notify the company who receives funds from certain class of persons correct which is part of first proviso clause 2 of first proviso of clause 7b so this was the clause 2 wherein a notification is indeed there has been notified by central government in which startup company is the example now second proviso following second proviso shall be inserted after the existing proviso to clause 7b of subsection 2 of section 56 by number 23 of 2019 with effect from 1st of april 2020 this is an amendment in the previous year 1920 with effect from 1st of april 2020 means from the assessment year 2021 and it will be applicable from 1st of April 2019. Previous year, 1st of April 2019. So second proviso is nothing but where the conditions are not satisfied by the exceptional companies, then what are the implications? Provided further that the provisions of this clause have been applied to a company on account of fulfillment of conditions specified in the notification issued under clause 2 so this is talking about this clause right so notification issued under clause 2 of first proviso and such company fails to comply with any of these conditions so conditions specified by the notification are not being satisfied any of the conditions is not satisfied 
by the concerned company. Then, any consideration received for issue of shares, any consideration received for issue of shares that exceeds fair market value of such share shall be deemed to be income of that company, chargeable to income tax for the previous year in which failure has taken place. So, amount which is exceeding fair market value shall be deemed to be income of the company which is specified in the notification previous year in which the failure has taken place correct and the penalty portion and it shall also be deemed that the company has under reported its income in consequence of the misreporting referred to in subsection 8 subsection 9 of section 270a for the said previous year so section 270a will be applicable it is nothing but penalty at the rate 200 percent will be made applicable to such a defaulting company which is friends nothing but second proviso to clause 7b and the second proviso is related to the notification issued by the company notification issued by the central government which is related to startup company we will be discussing the notification in detail in subsequent slides first we are discussing clause 7b so friends in clause 7b till now we have studied the main provision which states that a closely held company issuing shares at a premium in that case any consideration which is exceeding fair market value of the shares will be taxable in the hands of the company there are certain exceptions mentioned in proviso 1 and proviso 2 right? and the fair market value of the shares how do you derive it it has been mentioned in the explanation the same can be derived as per rule 11 u and rule 11 ua of the income tax rules 1962 so the fair market value of the shares has to be determined as per prescribed rules right and for the purpose of your syllabus we are not required to go into detail how rule 11 ua functions you can just remember the name of the rule the reference of the rule rule 11 u and rule 11 ua which is related to Clause 7b of subsection 2 of section 56 for determining the taxability of a closely held company where shares are issued at premium. Correct. Moving on to the explanation part. Explanation is nothing but it states the definition of the terms which has been used under the provision. First is fair market value. Fair market value of the shares shall be the value as may be determined in accordance with such method as may be prescribed so friends rule 11 u and rule 11 u a has been prescribed for the purpose of determining fair market value of the shares also another option is given to the company wherein the company can substantiate the value of the shares the company can substantiate the value of the shares in front of the assessing officer by valuing his assets so the company can substantiate that why they have taken such a consideration at premium why the consideration i mean what is the actual fair market value of the shares based on the asset value Based on the assets that the company is owning, what should be the fair market value of the shares can be derived by the company and in support of their claim, they can substantiate the value of the share. Correct? And the value of the shares can be determined by the company by valuing its assets. And assets includes tangible as well as intangible assets of the company. 
correct? So, clause 2, as may be substantiated by the company to the satisfaction of the AO based on the value of its assets, based on the value on the date of issue of shares of its assets. So, based on the asset value, the value of the shares can be determined by the company. And the assets in this case includes intangible assets as well, being goodwill, know-how, patents, copyrights, trademarks, licenses, franchises, or any other business or commercial rights of similar nature. So it is including intangible assets. So for deriving the fair market value of the company, of the shares, there are two options. Either you derive value based on the prescribed rules, which is rule 11U and rule 11UA or company himself, company itself can derive the value by valuing its assets and assets in this case includes intangible assets also. So two options are given to the company for determining the fair market value of the shares and whichever is higher between the two is to be taken, correct? And moving on to the next part wherein in the first proviso of clause 1, clause 1 of the first proviso we had taken an example or an example we had discussed that consideration received by venture capital undertaking from venture capital company or venture capital fund or a specified fund. If this is the case then provisions of 56 to 7b won't be applicable to such a venture capital undertaking. So in that case, the specified fund as we had discussed was related to Alternative Investment Fund AIF which is regulated by SEBI. And the same has been clarified by way of clause AA which has been inserted under the explanation part. Right. So, following clauses AA and AB. AA is related to specified fund and double and AB cut start and AB is related to definition of trust. So, following clauses shall be inserted after clause A of explanation to clause 7B of subsection 2 of section 56 with effect from 1st of April 2020. Specified fund means a fund established or incorporated in the form of trust company LLP or body corporate. So fund could be in any form trust company LLP body corporate which has been granted a certificate of registration as a category 1 or a category 2 alternative investment fund and is regulated by SEBI. Correct. So, a certificate of registration to act as a category 1 or category 2 alternative investment fund or you can use the short form as AIF, category 1 AIF, category 2 AIF which is regulated by SEBI regulations. Correct. Trust means trust established under the Indian Trust Act or under any other law for the timing in force and venture capital company, venture capital fund and undertaking shall have the meaning assigned to them under section 10. So friends, here meaning of the terms has been clarified, has been explained post the two provisos. So friends, we have studied under clause 7b the main provisions then the two provisos, then explanation wherein the definition of fair market value has been explained and definition of specified fund, trust and venture capital undertaking has been referred, has been explained. Now friends, after studying the laws 7b of subsection 2 of section 56, now let's understand what is the notification issued by the central government which is related to the startup company. Here, as a background, 
notification which was issued by central government it is reference to the conditions specified by ministry of commerce and industry in the department of promotion of industry and internal trade meaning the conditions are being specified by the pit which is department of promotion of industry and internal trade the conditions have been specified by ministry of commerce and industry and this is what has been referred by the central government by way of a notification to elaborate further this background we are coming from the proviso clause 2 of the proviso clause 2 of the first proviso which stated on your screen this clause shall not apply where the consideration for issue of shares is received by a company from a class or classes of persons as notified by the central government for this purpose so first proviso was related to the exceptions to the companies exception companies first was venture capital undertaking and second we had studied that the same the companies will be notified by the central government so now the company have been notified by the central government instead of notifying through a notification central government has referred to the conditions which were specified by ministry of commerce and such conditions were issued one month prior to the notification issued by the central government central government came up with such notification in march 2019 and the conditions specified by ministry of commerce were issued in feb 2019 so after understanding this background let's move ahead so friends this clause is related to exceptional companies which shall be notified by central government and wide notification number 13 2019 dated march 2019 the provisions of section central government notified that the provisions of section 56 to 7b shall not apply to a company which fulfills the conditions specified by ministry of commerce and industry in the department for promotion of industry and internal trade dpit so fulfill the conditions specified by ministry of commerce to avail the exceptions in clause 7b and you have to file a declaration referred to in this said notification this is the compliance procedure while this notification we will observe while we will be discussing the notifications the conditions which has been specified by ministry of commerce we will understand that these conditions are specific to a company which is receiving the consideration rather than the company the person who are investing in a company so conditions are to be satisfied by a company who is receiving the consideration as per ministry of commerce so last para why this notification central government has notified the conditions to be fulfilled by a company which is issuing shares rather than the class or class of persons to whom such shares are issued so conditions have to be satisfied by a company which is issuing the share as per the conditions specified by ministry of commerce now what are the conditions which are specified by ministry of commerce first is the startup company should be recognized by pbit by department of department for promotion of industry and internal trade it should be recognized as a company it should be a private limited company the company is paid up share capital and share premium should not exceed 25 crores and such paid up share capital including share premium will be post issue of shares so after issue of shares by the company the paid up share capital and share premium should not exceed 25 crores this is one of the conditions of the ministry of commerce to avail exceptions under clause 7b as a background you might have understood that 
a startup company a private limited company is trying to acquire funds by issuing its shares and in that process what ministry of commerce is trying to say is first you should be recognized it should be you should be a private limited company then your paid up share capital and share premium post issue of shares should not exceed 25 crore rupees however there is an exception to clause 2 that is if shares are issued to a non resident if shares are issued to a non resident or a venture capital company or a specified company then the 25 crore criteria won't be applicable meaning any shares issued to a non resident won't be considered in the aggregate of paid up share capital and share premium for the purpose of determining the 25 crore eligibility so if you have issued any share capital to non resident that won't be counted for the purpose of 25 crore criteria 25 crore paid up share capital and share premium and what are the other two companies venture capital company and a specified company specified company has been further explained as a company which is frequently traded as per sebi regulations frequently traded on recognized stock exchange and net worth of the company is exceeding 100 crores or turnover of the company is exceeding 250 crore that will be a specified company and if shares are issued to such a specified company then it won't be counted in the aggregate of paid up share capital and share premium correct also there will be other conditions in which the company the startup company is not allowed to invest in assets of other company or investment in infrastructure shares and securities providing loans and advances that will be covering in the subsequent slide first let's understand what are clause 1 and clause 2 of the conditions specified by ministry of commerce and industry so friends the ministry of commerce and industry in the department for promotion of industry and internal trade the pit has by notification dated 192 2019 specified in para 4 there under that a startup shall be eligible for exemption under clause 2 of the proviso to section 5627b if it fulfills the following conditions first condition it has been recognized by dpit as a startup as per this notification or any earlier notification on the subject so it should be recognized as a startup by dpit first condition second condition is related to is related to paid up share capital and share premium aggregate amount of paid up capital and share premium of the startup after issue or proposed issue of shares after the issue of shares the aggregate paid up capital and share premium should not exceed 25 crore rupees however now the exceptions however shares issued to any of the following persons shall not be included in the aggregate of 25 crores a non resident a venture capital company or venture capital fund funds have been received from a venture capital company or venture capital fund or a specified company what do you mean by specified company a company whose shares are frequently traded within the meaning of sebi regulations 2011 and frequently traded on a recognized stock exchange whose and whose turnover whose net worth on the last day of financial year preceding the year in which shares are issued the net worth of such a company of such a specified company exceeds the net worth exceeds 100 crore or turnover for the financial year preceding the year in which shares are issued exceeds 250 crores 250 crores right 
तो फ्रेंड्स स्पेसिफाइड कंपनी शेयर्स शुड बी फ्रीक्वेंटली ट्रेडेड एंड सेकेंड क्राइटेरिया इज डिवाइडेड इन टू इधर नेटवर्थ और टर्न ओवर नेटवर्थ शुड एक्सीड हंड्रेड करोर टर्न ओवर शुड एक्सीड टू फिफ्टी करोर इन दी इमीडिएटली प्रिसेडिंग फाइनेंशियल ईयर राइट एंड थ्री एक्सेप्शन टू दी लॉस टू वेर इन दे वोट बी इंक्लूडेड अंडर द क्राइटेरिया ऑफ टू फिफ्टी करोर दे वोट बी ट्रीटेड As part of 250 crores of paid-up share capital and share premium, first exception is non-resident. Practically, if you see, very much relevant criteria. Wherein, generally, you might have heard the news that you know a startup company is raising so and so amount of funds, right? So, for a startup company, it's very critical that once the operation of the company or the idea of the company is good i mean is accepted by general public then it then in order to expand its business it requires funds so for that purpose they are issuing shares at premium based on valuation of the startup the startup receives funds it could be either from resident or non resident so where the funds i received from a non resident where there is inflow of funds from outside india you can say in that case an exception has been provided to such a startup company to raise funds right so this is acting as an incentive for a startup company to raise funds either from a non resident company either from a non resident either from a venture capital company or either from a specified company specified company in a way by way of definition you will understand that it is a very well established company so funds received from a very well established company or from a non resident or from a venture capital company will not be part of 25 crore criteria of paid up share capital and share premium correct third clause friends the startup company has not invested in any of the following assets so then we will go through the assets in which the company is not allowed to invest for a period of 7 years the cap is for a period of 7 years the intention behind it appears that the startup company should be concentrating on its business for which it has been incorporated and the funds should not be utilized by the startup company for any other purpose any other purpose means investing in infrastructure investing in a land or building whether for residential or non residential purposes if the startup is using the building for its own incorporated setup for its own setup then that is fine however if the startup is using the funds which has been utilized which has been accumulated by issuing the shares if the startup is utilizing those funds in investing in a building in a land or building then that won't be accepted this is one of the conditions by the ministry of commerce by way of insertion of clause 3 wherein startup companies are prohibited to invest in certain type of assets wherein one of the assets is investing in land or building is prohibited investing in shares is prohibited investing providing loans and advances to others is prohibited purchasing a motor vehicle you can say purchasing of motor vehicle exceeding 10 lakhs of the value is prohibited so by way of this provisions you can understand that message is clear from the ministry of commerce that the startup company should be concentrating on its own business rather than utilizing the funds for investing in infrastructure or providing loans and advances to other companies however having said that if the main purpose of the company if the business of the company is purchasing is buying and selling of 
residential property or commercial property then that will be allowed if the business of the company is providing loans and advances to others then that will be allowed so unless and until it's a main purpose you are not allowed to invest in any of the assets mentioned under clause 3 first one land or building building or land appurtenant thereto being a residential house other than that used by the startup for the purpose of renting or held by it as stock in trade in the ordinary course of business correct right? so if it is the business of the startup then it is allowed else investing in residential property is not allowed investing in a commercial property here you can see not being a residential house investing in land or building or both which is a commercial property other than that occupied by startup for its own business that is fine or used by it for the purpose of renting or held by it as stock in trade in the ordinary course of business unless and until the startup is using the land and building for its own occupation that is fine however apart from using it for the main purpose or using the asset for the purpose of its business any other purpose is not allowed by ministry of commerce so investment in land or building or both is not allowed in a commercial properties as well loans and advances not allowed other than loans and advances extended in the ordinary course of business by the startup where the lending of money is substantial part of its business that is also fine apart from the main purpose of lending money or accepting deposits for any other purpose loans and advances provided by the startup is strictly prohibited capital contribution made to any other entity is not allowed investing in shares and securities is not allowed investing in motor vehicle aircraft yacht or any other mode of transport the actual cost of which exceeds 10 lakhs is not allowed other than the motor vehicles other than that held by a startup for the purpose of flying hiring leasing or a stock in trade in the ordinary course of business right jewelry investing in jewelry is not allowed other than use the ordinary course of business any other asset which are in the nature of archaeological collections drawings paintings sculptures any work of art or bullion so friends unless and until the main purpose of your business is either of the assets mentioned over here if not then investing in such type of assets is strictly prohibited and has been inserted as one of the conditions by ministry of commerce if these conditions are not satisfied for a period of 7 years then the implications we have already discussed the implications would be shares issued the fair market value of the consideration received from shares issued at premium amount which is exceeding the fair market value will be taxable in the hands of the company in the year of default and a penalty of 200% will be imposed on the company as per section 2270a a penalty will be imposed on the company at the rate 200% correct if any of the three conditions that we have discussed as per instructions issued by ministry of commerce if these conditions are not satisfied by the startup company then this will be the implication right friends also startup should invest in any of the assets mentioned above should not invest in any of the assets mentioned above for a period of 7 years from the end of the latest financial year in which shares are issued at premium so the 7 years criteria will come into effect from the end of the previous year in which the shares have been issued at premium so friends as per the notification issued by ministry of commerce and industry three conditions have been satisfied for which a startup company you will understand the definition of startup company also in the subsequent slide the conditions specified are it should be a recognized company a private limited company 
private limited company has been specified specifically correct so the company should be a recognized company recognized as a startup company second criteria paid up share capital plus share premium of the company post issue of shares should not exceed 25 crores however for considering this limit shares issued to a non resident or venture capital company or to a specified company won't be counted in this aggregate criteria of 25 crores correct right? specified company is nothing but the shares are frequently traded and net worth is exceeding 100 crores and turnover is exceeding 250 crores also startup company is prohibited to invest in the specified assets for a period of 7 years from the end of the year from the end of the year in which shares are issued at premium by the company right now friends definition or meaning of startup startup will be recognized for a period of 10 years correct right? and startup is nothing but a private company so the criteria of private company is coming from the definition of startup first is period the startup will be recognized for a period of 10 years and it should be a private limited company turnover limit is nothing but 100 crores the turnover of the startup company should not exceed 100 crores in any of the financial years and in any of the financial years you can see for the period of 10 financial years the turnover of the company should not exceed 100 crores if it exceeds then it won't be termed as startup company if it is not termed as startup company then the exceptions provided under clause 7b won't be applicable to the company correct right? and the object and purpose of the company is innovation developing new products employment generation so on and so forth correct right? also the company should not be formed by spreading up of the existing company it should be a new company so friends on your screen meaning of a startup a company would be considered as a startup if the following conditions are satisfied first is period it would be considered as a startup up to a period of 10 years from the date of incorporation registration up to a period of 10 years from the date of incorporation registration it should be incorporated as private limited company turnover limit turnover of the company for any of the financial years since incorporation registration has not exceeded 100 crores so in any of the financial years the turnover limit should not exceed 100 crore rupees object and purpose the company is working towards innovation development or improvement of products or processes or services or if it is a scalable business model with high potential of employment generation or wealth creation so in a way you are benefiting the country either by way of employment generation wealth creation innovation development of a new product it should be one of the object and purposes of the startup company right and the private limited company which is a startup company should not be considered as a startup if it is formed by splitting up or reconstruction of existing business it should be an altogether a new business and it should not be formed by splitting up or reconstruction of an existing business so friends period criteria of 10 years and turnover limit of up to 100 crores for a period of 10 years this is what you need to keep in mind while considering the definition of startup and in this subsequent slide it only reiterates the implications if conditions are not satisfied by the company if conditions of ministry of commerce are not satisfied in any of the financial years then anything which exceeds fmb shall be deemed to be the income and penalty will be as per section 270a wherein penalty at the rate of 
200% of the tax payable will be levable on the company. Correct? So, friends, this concludes the notification which was issued by Ministry of Commerce and this was related to Clause 2 of First Proviso which is applicable to the startup company. Correct? And friends, this concludes Clause 7b, Subsection 2 of Section 36, wherein we have studied that any shares issued at a premium by a company in which public are not substantially interested and the total consideration received is exceeding fair market value, then anything in excess will be taxable under Clause 7b. And there are exceptions to this clause which we have discussed in detail. So friends, this concludes clause 7b of subsection 2 of section 56.